this video I would like to talk a little bit about the negative relationship between purity and the feminine. So one of the reasons why purity is used uh, in a way against the feminine is also because of the transition from matriarchy to patriarchy. So as I explained in the first video of this series, one of the essential for spiritual development is love and love is the ability to connect and to be open to um, all aspects of the other of the beloved and women compared to men are much more loving creatures so by their nature and their sensuality and sensitivity they tend to allow much more imprints to happen upon themselves than men do. So it is a little bit similar to the to the physical sensitivity. Women have a better sense of smell, they have a, a, a better eyesight, especially when it comes to colors. Their skin sensitivity is almost double that of men, but the same holds true also for their energetic bodies which are also much more sensitive and much more absorbing the energies of their environments than uh, male energies are. So this very nature of women um, in a way allows them to notice their environment in much greater detail, but also allows their environment to impact them to a much stronger degree than men. So women are much more vulnerable through being manipulated by their surroundings uh, than men are. <laughs> so it is both an advantage, but also a vulnerability, uh, the feminine sensitivity. To deal with this, women, of course, yeah, started to develop uh, knowledge and techniques in how they could cleanse themselves of all these influences, how they could in a way pick and choose what to keep and what to get rid of, of this flood of information which was coming to them. Unfortunately, this knowledge has been lost. So many women don't know how to yeah, control their energy bodies anymore, how to deal with the, all the energies they're getting from the outside world. And that has given the people who advocate purity a very strong weapon. They say, ah, but women need to be protected. They cannot have all these contacts or associations or imprints because it is not good for them. Therefore, they must be protected from society, from themselves, from their own sensitivities. So. A lot of the uh, purity is in a way used to in a way ostracize women from their environment to in a way um, rather than teaching them how to manage the flood of information removing the information <laughs> so I compare it a little bit with raising a child you can put lock up the child in a room with only soft cushions and cuddly toys or you can teach the child how to deal with the world how to cross the street by looking if there are scars first and um, in a way the whole development of women how to deal with their femininity has been yeah largely removed by male dominated religions and because of the um, problems women experience, they often accept the male idea that, okay, then we need to be protected, we need to be limited, we need to be kept in certain roles or places, uh, which are easier for us. But it is a little bit like, um, yeah, I would say castrating an animal to make them more docile. So you can remove a woman's capability to deal with the complexity and then they will go into a yeah a lesser role but 
rather than in a way uh, yeah, castrating animals, you could also educate them how to behave well, even with their power and their impulses. And I feel also the same should be done with women. So if we look a little bit more specifically at the purity which is imposed by the patriarchy, um, we see it comes in different forms. Uh, one of them is in a way the uh, male ownership of their female partners. Often they are seen as something yeah, relatively valuable or fragile which must be protected or kept safe um, and yeah, under control of the, uh, of the masculine. And any desires of the woman to escape that control are seen as impurities. So they say, well, your desire to go out, to be pretty, to be noticed, to um, learn, uh, have a career, uh, this is all yeah, inappropriate um, because your natural role is to serve. And in a way, they are right because women are sensitive and they respond to what they feel, they respond to what they sense. So they have a natural responsiveness. But a natural responsiveness is not the same as servitude. If there is a need for a strong leader or a need for an executioner or a policeman to take charge of a situation or a fireman, that is also responding to a need, just like women do. But that doesn't mean that they are subservient when they see a situation which they feel called to respond to, they take control of the situation. And this is also the nature of the feminine, to in a way, when everything is going well, the feminine is willing to just observe. And when there is a need for action, the feminine is roused with great power and great passion to act and to take charge. So in a way the feminine is very much, you could say, the safety valve of the world. If everything is going well, the safety valve is relatively passive. If things are going wrong, then the feminine becomes very active and very potent. The problem is that, of course, when the feminine is active, it shows that the other powers, whether they be male or female, have made a mess of things when the feminine is not incorrect in feeling that it needs to take over. And that criticism is of course very inherently damaging. So if there's women protesting in the street en masse, that really shows to me, okay, the masculine has failed, has failed miserably, otherwise this would not happen. And ultimately, if things fail miserably, they should be replaced. So if you, if I see male, males protesting, it can be for many reasons. They want something or they're angry at something, they're upset at something, but often it is a very personal thing. They're not responding to uh, the whole society or the structure of society itself being uprooted. They're often responding to their own personal pain or their personal woes. Not that they should be ignored, but yeah, mass uh, protests by women often show that there is a fundamental flaw in society, which needs to be addressed very urgently. And of course, mass protests are on a large scale, but we all see this on a very small scale as well, with our male friends and our female friends acting very differently to crises around us. So sometimes men will react, sometimes women will respond. And often you would see that when men react, um, it is often because they feel that they have a role to play. Like they want to manifest their own power. Uh, while when women respond, they often see that there is uh, a structural problem, that if they do not respond, things will not go well. So it is more a worry for the future which causes the women to respond. And often that response is not 
necessarily a solution. It doesn't have to be goal-oriented, but it should be a signal to yeah, everybody, both male and female, that something needs to be done. So, if we go further into exploring the, uh, in a way, the castration of the feminine by the purity, um, we also see this on a sexual aspect. So purity is often meant that women should not have sex or not have sexual desires unless approved by men. Um, and often there is then the one man who's uh, assigned control over that woman. And this is then called purity or chastity and praised. <laughs> Well, let's, it should be obvious that I disagree with this. Doesn't mean that I advocate for all women to be polyamorous. Because as I said before, women in general have lost the ability to filter out and to deal with imprints. And since women are by nature more loving, their partners or whoever they're in intimate contact with will influence them very strongly compared to how men are influenced. So the influence on a typical woman who has intimate contact will be four or five times greater than the influence would be on a man who has a similar contact. And all these yeah, um, contacts, if they are not countered, have a very strong and ultimately very confusing and detrimental imprint upon the woman. So. If a woman is with a man because of her love and the, in a way as should happen when there is love that the person who is loved becomes the center of their universe and they adapt and arrange themselves around that center and that center changes again and again and again and after several partners where is your center where are you what is your own nature you've lost it and this can happen to both men and women, but it happens to women much more rapidly and deeply than it happens to most men. So there is a real danger in intimate relationships that we not only can find ourselves, but we can also lose ourselves. So in this sense, chastity um, yeah, can help, can prevent us from losing ourselves. What would be better is if we would learn how to deal with relationships in a good way, in a way which benefits both partners. So we need to be aware of that because of our love we will rearrange ourselves and we should therefore also be picky. <laughs> Who, what will that rearrangement bring us? What will it cost us? Do we lose sight of ourselves, of our nature? And how to counter that. As I said, for men it is less of a problem, but for women it is a quite large problem. And women have the tendency to carry loads for others. So they often see the limits of the man, like, oh, they cannot deal with this, they cannot deal with that. So just like a cat will absorb the negative energy or diseases from its owner to support them. In the same way, women often take the burdens uh, from their husbands or from their partners. And ultimately, who gets to suffer, who gets a depression, who gets stressed? It is not the man, but it is the woman who actually carries the burden of the man. So you need to be very aware as a woman, what burdens are you taking on by choosing that partner? And of course, if you take multiple partners, what multiple burdens will you be taking on? But this is also the blessing which women's, women can give to men. They can unburden the man, purify the man, so the man is able to perform their function. So you've probably heard the saying, behind every great man is a greater woman. And it is often true that because of the women in a person's life, they attain a sense of purity, 
they attain a sense of clarity of purpose and therefore can achieve great things which would not be possible without their partners. So you could see it a little bit as the, the man is the car but yeah the woman is the fuel and without that the car is not going to move. So the woman should also recognize that, that in a way the achievements of the man, which the man of course will ascribe to themselves, which is also not incorrect, are often only possible because the woman creates the conditions for the man to achieve those things and to move forward in his life. So if we take that one step further, and we realize that we all have the masculine and the feminine within us. Then we get into a very different alchemy of how we have to relate to these different parts of our being very, very differently. So what is good and healthy for the man, this sense of purity, this sense of letting go of everything to be able to achieve the purpose, is in a way robbing the feminine of her power and of her purpose. So, as I said before, for the man, it can be very good to go on a quest, to go into a monastery or something similar. What is the effect of the identical exercise on the woman? Think about it. If a woman is placed in a place where, in a way, there is very little call for her abilities, for her mission, why she even incarnated, what will be the result? Stagnation, depression, possibly even insanity. Because if no good stimuli present themselves, the spirit will conjure them up, will create them. They will create the very problems they are meant to solve. So women need challenges to manifest their power, to grow, to fulfill their spiritual purpose. And purity should not stand in their way. <laughs> 